I'm in the kitchen today and I'm going to teach you how to make a very simple peach butter in the crock pot. In my last video, I taught how to can peaches. I also referred to what to do with those peaches that maybe aren't as firm, maybe little children have dropped them on the floor, we have a lot of those, and they have some bruises on them. Don't throw them away because you can make peach butter with all of these mushed and smashed peaches. I'm going to show you how to do it. The first thing you do is get a peach, of course, uh, one that's preferably soft, maybe has a bad spot in it. You're going to cut it in half. And I just want to show you this one's got, you can't see it. It looks good, but there's a lot of pieces in here that are super soft. When I am canning peaches, I want to make sure that my peaches are firm and ripe. However, sometimes you run into a peach that has some soft spots on it. You don't want to use that for just canning peaches, but you can use it for peach butter. I take all the soft wedges and I just throw them in my crock pot. This one was filled to the brim from when I canned in my last video peaches and I turned it on low for eight to 12 hours. Once that is finished, this has been cooking for about 12 hours. I take my immersion blender, I just put it in there and I get it everything nice and smooth. That also helps with the skins. That's why I keep the skins on because it doesn't make any difference in my final product. Once it's been blended with the immersion blender, I throw in some cinnamon, some nutmeg, some ginger and some cloves. You can kind of just gauge. I just do some shakes and then I stir that up and it's ready to go. I am going to put these in the jars to be canned. Peaches is one of the fruits that you can do in a hot water bath. It does not need a pressure canner. I've got my stainless steel funnel here and all I'm going to do is fill up these jars and I'm going to leave about a half an inch head space, which just means I'm going to fill it all the way to a half inch below the rim. Just kind of a rough estimate there. Okay. I'm going to get filling the rest of these jars up and then we're going to come back. I've got all my jars filled again, half an inch of head space. The next thing I'm going to do, which is a very important step in canning is I am going to wipe the rims of the jars so that anything wet, any food that is accidentally spilled on the jars are wiped off and it doesn't affect the seal. You don't want to go through all this work only for your jars not to seal. If your jars do happen to not seal, I every once in a while I have a few that do not seal. I either just go ahead and throw it in the fridge and use it, or I might try to reprocess it. I'll throw it in the fridge and I'll bring it back out, bring it to room temperature, and then go ahead and try to can it again. Uh, you can do either method, but sometimes you will have jars that do not seal. I'm gonna th put lids on these jars now that the, the rims are clean. I have two kinds of lids here. I mentioned this in my last video, but I use the ball jar lids for when I want to give canned foods to people. Uh, they're fine, but you throw them away and you have to buy new ones. So what I use for at home use are these reusable lids. They are a take on the old style lids that our grandmothers would have used. Uh, there's a plastic lid and then you have a rubber seal that just goes right on top of it. I really like this company. It's Harvest Guard Reusable Lids. They're made in America, which I absolutely love. And I can use them over and over and over again. I have yet to replace these and I have used these for three or four seasons of harvest already. So I'm going to put these lids right on top of the jars. And then we are going to get these ready to go in the canner. 
I've got my canner ready. I've already put the water in here and I'm just going to put my peach butter into the water. If I need to add water, I will. You want one inch of water covering the jars. And I am going to bring this to a boil. There we go. For peach butter, you want to process for five minutes in boiling water. Once you have finished processing your jars, the five minutes is up, then you're going to want to let it sit for a couple minutes in the water. Take your trusty jar lifter and bring out the jars and let them sit on the counter for about eight hours to make sure that all have sealed properly. The jars are finishing up processing in the hot water bath and pretty soon I'm going to have several jars of peach butter on my shelf with just little effort. Really the crock pot does a lot of the work and then it's just five minutes of processing. There's a couple things I want to mention about canning. Again, if you haven't seen my hot water bath canning video, I encourage you to go to that video first if you're just learning and this is the first time you've ever done something like this. I go in depth a little bit more on how to hot water bath can and the tools that you need. Another thing that I want to mention is a book that I have found super helpful in my canning process. It is so easy to preserve and it comes from the Cooperative Extension of the University of Georgia. You can find this online. I'm going to put a link in the description. I highly recommend this book. It has everything you need to know about canning vegetables, canning meat, canning broth, all sorts of things in this book. If you are interested in learning more about canning or want to dip your feet in it, this is the book. I have used this book over and over. It gives me my processing times. It tells me what I can can in a hot water bath and what I can can in a pressure canner. Really, it's like an encyclopedia for canning. So I highly recommend this book. If you enjoyed this video and you want more recipes, you want to learn more about preserving the harvest, like this video and subscribe so you don't miss any more content. Thanks for joining me.